All right. Hey, everybody uh, out there on YouTube. Um, my name is Evan, and I wanted to kind of show you guys something that uh, is probably pretty important. I have this uh, Newmark Scratch, this mixer by Newmark, and uh, it's got some pretty cool features. It's it's pretty bare, bare bones type uh, of setup. You know, you have your three band EQ, and then you have your gain, you have your line phono, um, then you also have your tone and your mic controls here. You have your filter, your loop selects, and you have four um, pads. Uh, you can switch uh, between the modes of the pads uh, using this shift button here. Oh no, using this pad mode. And then you have your shift button here too where you can do various things. Uh, you can do secondary procedures. Uh, it has a crossfader reverse and it also has a crossfader slope. Um, and it's basically the same on this side. You have EQ, uh, obviously. And then you also have your paddles, which is cool that they incorporated paddles in here. Um, if I was going to do anything different on this mixer, mixer would be two things. Uh, one, for sure, it would be um, a better crossfader. Uh, it comes with a inno fader, but it's, it's not a very good inno fader for some reason. It's not like a pro model, it's just a very bare bones, very basic um, crossfader. And it, it's okay if you're just gonna be kind of using it for basic mixing, but if you're gonna be cutting and scratching and stuff, you're gonna definitely need to upgrade this fader. The, the other thing um, that I would probably change on this is um, the up faders. Um, having them an onboard uh, knob or control that would that controls the slope of the up faders uh, that that's not um, doable um, quick access style you know what I mean like with a switch or anything like that or a, a knob uh, so these just are our gradual faders but what I wanted to talk to with you today about is that I just recently got an inno fader PNP2 for this um, this device and it's actually supposed to be a drop-in style crossfader uh, and I actually have it dialed in just right uh, but the problem is that this faceplate is too big for it um, I thought it was just a drop-in uh, kind of fader but it looks like I have to make some um, not adjustments but I have to make some I have to do some things with it uh, to make it just right uh, so as you can see, like if you if you press over, you can hear the sound. See that? That's the fader hitting the faceplate. It's not supposed to sound like that. So in the next uh, section, I'm gonna show you guys actually how to fix that problem if you buy the PNP two fader for it. So I'll talk to you guys in just a sec. All right, guys, so I uh, just wanted to actually show you what the fader looks like. This is the PNP2 uh, model. Uh, the one that I ordered is the newer version. So it's supposed to come with like an orange or a red sticker at the top. So uh, if you are getting a fader, a new fader for your new mark, Scratch, uh, this one also goes with other ones like uh, I think the Rain 72. Uh, but this one's really cool because you can actually adjust the, the cut-in and the curve uh, using these little um, uh, potentiometers here, which is really nice. You know, you don't have to worry about that other way that they have. Uh, you can also recalibrate it using this button here. It's real simple um, to figure out once you get it set up. Uh, I was going to start taking it apart here and uh, get into the internals because that's where I need to make the changes. So uh, just real quick guys, I think the way to get into the internals is that you have to pull back these little uh, clips here. There's six on one or three on one side and three on the other side. So I'm gonna try that now and then I'll let you guys know if that's what fixed it or that's what worked. All right, guys, so uh, I'm back. Um, yeah, that's actually what was able to take this this off. This is the cover, right? We saw this a little earlier. That's the cover. And those little slots right there are, they match up to these little 
pins that are on the side. Um, and they're clamped down all the way to the, the metal. So what you need to do, or what I did, um, is I actually, in order to get enough space so that I could get my needle nose pliers and pry them off, you have to, I had to use this, and this was like a stronger razor blade, to pop that, to get underneath that little tooth and to get it just high enough to, to bend it just high enough so that I could actually bend the rest using some tiny needle nose pliers and I was able to get them um, straight up, right? So that's how they look now, those are the pins. And this is the internal of the fader. Um, this is just the cover that goes over this section right here. So now I'm gonna just actually, I'm gonna take this out these black rails, I'm gonna take those out and I'm gonna do something there. I'll just show you that here in a second. All right, guys, so actually, once you get to this part, um, it's pretty easy. This mixer actually comes with a baggie of goodies. So this mixer comes with an additional um, stem, right, for, for the fader, the cross fader stem. And in that bag, there's also four of these four of these uh, O-rings. And they're kinda, they kinda act like little spacers, they're kinda like bumpers. And the unit already has two of them. So it's got one here on this one and then it's got one up here. Uh, and basically all you have to do, see the fader itself only hits that top part, right? That top bar. So um, I'm a, I actually put an additional one of these. The, there were four of them. I put an additional one here and I put an additional one here. And I'm gonna see if that's gonna give me enough space in between um, to uh, make it so that it doesn't hit the face plate of my mixer. And I'll let you know how it worked, okay? All right, guys, so I think we're golden. Uh, I put it all back together, and I'm getting ready to go ahead and uh, set it um, using the those little uh, turn knobs that I showed you earlier. But yeah, we're in business now. You see how it's slightly away from the faceplate now? See? That took care of it. And I just needed one on one side and one on the other side, the bumpers. See, that's what you want. You want it to have that thud as opposed to a click. See how it's, n it's no longer hitting the faceplate? Cool, cool. So now I'm just going to take it. I put back the... Oops. Yeah, that's on the wrong side. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, now I'm just going to take this unit... I got it. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm gonna plug it back in here to this little slot right here. And then on the bottom, this little plate actually comes off. So I'm gonna trim it out using these knobs and the little screwdriver. It comes with this little tiny screwdriver. And I'm gonna do that with this portion open. Uh, and then I'm gonna be playing my Serato and uh, cutting in and out. Uh, to see where I want to uh, have the cut in and the cut out. So it worked out. So um, if you're in a situation where this happens for you, just uh, and you run into questions or anything, just let me know. I'll see if I can help you out. Okay. All right, guys. So, uh, so I'm back. Um, and sure enough, uh, it fixed the problem that I was dealing with. Uh, remember the clicking sound that I was making before? Well, I, I put the I put the stem back or the stem cap back on, but watch now you can hear it's making just a thud. And it's not clicking. Right? If it would be clicking if it was hitting the faceplate. It's not doing that anymore. And by the way, guys, <clears throat> this cuts way, 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 way better. Cuts way better now. So um, 
you have to make the adjustments um, while it's in the unit. And there's a, actually a door underneath here and you make the adjustments. Uh, I actually flipped it over. So everything I was doing was in reverse and I made the adjustments while it was flipped over. The adjustments can be pretty tricky to do. So uh, be careful with those. I start out usually with the middle one and then uh, I kind of go to the side ones. One thing you definitely don't want to do is when it's sitting in this situation here, do not recalibrate the the uh, fader, okay? Don't recalibrate, don't go through that recalibration process for the fader. Um, leave it as it is, okay? If you're gonna calibrate it, make sure that it's in its original um, um, design where it only had one bumper, because if you have double bumpers on both sides, it's not going to calibrate correctly in that situation. So that's that's one kind of downside. Just don't recalibrate it. Once you have it set up like this, just don't go through that process. So other than that, because you, you'll probably get like this weird, I was getting a weird scratchy sound. Would I buy this particular fader again? Um, I love the feel of it and I love the cut of it, but I probably wouldn't get it for this because it's not an actual drop-in um, uh, it's not a perfect drop-in uh, crossfader. You have to make adjustments to the internal of the fader itself for it to work properly for your system. But it, it cuts perfectly now. Um, and I got all my... I'm able to do my crab scratches like I used to be able to uh, on my other mixer. So um, with my other... When I had my other fader in here, I, I was having a lot of uh, difficulty because I'd have to, this fader would have to come out way further for me to do a crab scratch, and now it doesn't have to come out very far at all. I wouldn't get this PNP2 though for this particular uh, unit. Um, I'd get something that's more of a drop in um, style uh, fader. So if you guys have questions, uh, just let me know. Um, I think that's pretty much it, and you guys have a good day. Bye bye.